Previously on Love at First Shot, we learned how a bullet is born, how to know which ammo to choose for your firearm, and why the 22 is the perfect round for new shooters. And now it's finally time to try out some of those rounds and see what they can do. I'm Natalie Foster, and this is Love at First Shot, sponsored by Smith & Wesson. Now we're back in Texas with Melanie Sturgis, who is an NRA certified instructor and the owner of Texas on Target. And she has been recommended as the ammo pro. Now, when you are dealing with a first timer, um, somebody who needs to know about ammo, where would you start? I tell you, how many pairs of black shoes do you have in your closet? Oh, that is not a fair question to ask well, me. Well, and no married women should have to answer that. <laughs> You've got more than one pair because you use them for a different thing. <laughs> same thing with our ammo and same thing with our gun. For a new shooter, we want to start with a 22 round because it's light. There's no recoil and it's just a simple easy shooting round. Okay. The thing about a 22 round is the primer the Compound that actually makes it goes bang mm -hmm. is in the rim of the cartridge case. That's why they call it rim fire. Rim fire, okay, okay. as opposed to a, a center fire. Center fire, okay. Where we have a primer in the center, but got a little gunpowder, got some air, and then your bullet is actually seated in there down to about right there. This whole item right here is the cartridge. It's the ammunition, the bullet is the piece that sits on the top. Gotcha. So the cartridge is the component that carries everything else, including the primer, the gunpowder, or whatever else is in there, right? Absolutely. Without the cartridge case, there's no party at all. This is a 22 magazine, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this differs from a lot of other magazines because it has a lever like this, right? Mm -hmm. There's actually a little button here on the side. Mm -hmm. As I push this button down, it's going to depress that spring. And I simply just take a 22 round, mm -hmm. I put the rim in there, and I just drop it and it just slides right in. Okay. When I'm ready to load the next round, mm -hmm. I reach and I pull that knob down. And I drop it in like that. Just right like that. We've got the important points about 22 ammo down, but before we shoot, Melanie is gonna go over those ever important safety rules. Now, you have a protocol that you like to run through first, so let's do that. Eyes and ears always. It doesn't matter even if you're just watching, you still have to have eyes and ears. Mm -hmm. When I pass a gun to you, it will have no magazine in it and the bolt will be locked back. Okay. And we'll follow our three safety rules. Muzzle downrange, always. Mm -hmm. Always keep your finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot. And always load your gun only when you're ready to shoot. Okay, well, I think we should get to it. Natalie, you did a good job. Thank you. This was from our 22 pistol. Right. That's the size of the round compared to the hole that's there. And if you actually take it, it just fits right in. Ah, just perfect. perfect, nice and snug. Okay. Let's pop on down to this one. This one was the 22 AR platform you were shooting. Right. Now, keep in mind that the 22 for the handgun is exactly the same round that you would use for the 22 AR or modern sporting rifle. And while the 22 is light, easy and fun to shoot, you may find that you want to step things up a bit. And for that, we look to the 9mm. It's important to keep in mind that there are lots of different rounds out there. And we're touching on kind of the most popular out there. Is that accurate? Absolutely. And 9mm that you've got up here next is a very common cartridge. It's used a lot in uh, shooting games. It's used a lot for plinking. It's used a lot for even home defense. Mm -hmm. This cartridge is 9mm. It differs from the other one because it has the primer in the center. It's a center fire cartridge. As you pull the trigger, the firing pin goes forward and smacks that primer, which is what creates the boom. We have a little bit of gunpowder a little bit of air, and there our bullet sits on top of that, our actual projectile. Right. So it's actually lead underneath with a little copper coating on top of a copper jacket. And this one is called a full metal jacket, is that right? Full metal jacket because it has the copper coating on the top. Next, on our 9 millimeter ammo, we're stepping up just a little bit. We talked about our shoes. Oh, yes. Here's where our shoes come in. If you're going to be walking all day, you're going to put your black loafers on your flats, aren't you? Well, it depends, but yes. Unless you have to look real pretty that day. <laughs> yeah, unless I have to look fabulous, then yes. I'm probably wearing comfortable shoes. And if you're going on a job interview, you're going to wear some business pumps, some high right? Some heels, right. So on this one here, the bullet is the only thing that differs. And if you can look on the end of this one, mm -hmm. that one actually is uh, has a hole in the center and it has a little stem sticking through. Mm -hmm. This would be more of a defensive kind of round mm -hmm. because what happens is when this bullet impacts something, that little stem hits, the little slices along the 
bullet open up and it pedals open like that mm -hmm. and it lets it go through. That's considered a hollow point, correct? Yes, ma'am. And it's a hollow point because the point is hollow, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> now, people think that the hollow point is the evil round, but in reality, they just, they simply function differently. Is that right? If you're in a home situation where you need to defend, defend yourself, yourself if you use something like a full metal jacket, because a nine millimeter is a fast light bullet, it's probably going to go through one or two walls or even more walls. A hollow point is designed when it hits, it stops. It opens up, right. it mushrooms out, which slows it down. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's talk about this one. I know it's a little trickier because it doesn't typically have the button on the side, correct? It, it doesn't have the button on the side and that's why they call it thumb busting. Ah. Because you just keep putting more and more in and you bust your thumb sounds, time and time again. That sounds super fun. Now, put that spring in there, I press down on it and just push it in. That was not as much fun as loading that 22. Yeah, did you notice? I did notice <laughs> and here's the thing. I pay a lot for my manicures, mm -hmm. so I like to maintain them. I like this little device that we happen to have oh so conveniently that really spares your manicure. You just basically set it on a flat surface, uh -huh. put this over the top, squeeze it, uh -huh. push down, that depresses that spring magazine, drop it in and open it up. And wasn't that easy? I mean, they're still fine. It's like working maracas, I'm telling you, it's <laughs> easy. This is an m and nine millimeter shield. Safety's on, I'm handling it to you. Okay. There you go. Gotcha. This was from our nine millimeter. Right. Here's our nine millimeter compared against the size of the hole. Notice, again, the nose of the bullet just snugs right up in there. Yeah, it certainly does. The nine millimeter is a great handgun caliber that many people find to be just the right size for their comfort level. So what would be a similarly comfortable yet effective round for a rifle? Let's see what Melanie thinks. I have uh, an extremely common round here, which of course is the 223. Yeah. This one right here is a center fire. We have our powder, air gap, and then our bullet actually goes down to about right there in this thing. This also, can you see a little tiny hole in the center? I can. This is also a hollow point. Okay. This one here, light, easily shooting round, no recoil, very little noise. This is a good round after I've started someone on a 22 with a rifle to move them up to this 223 round right here. Okay, so there's that magazine for you, and then the rounds. Okay. So now this, it's a little different from the others, right? It is just a little bit different. You see how we've got a little thing sticking up right there? Yep. The plate of that magazine. I sure do. I just put this on top, just right dead in the middle. Mm hmm Okay. Push it down. Did you hear a click? Oh, man. That's so much easier. Absolutely, no doubt. Yeah. And these will stagger from side to side as you load it up. Okay. This other one here, I'm also just putting it right on top. Okay. And it's in. So you don't necessarily need a Lula for this particular type of magazine, although they do make them. So mm -hmm. if you want them, they're available. Mm -hmm. They're totally out there for you. Bolt open, no magazine, right. safety on. Okay, thank you. And now, this one may surprise you a little bit. Here's the 223 round you shot. Which looks a lot bigger than the 22, which is next to it. It is significantly larger. Yeah. And again, if we stick the nose of the bullet in, look at that. Yeah, so it's a lot smaller than you would think it is. It's actually comparable to the 22. Only slightly larger. Which explains the reduced recoil in a 223. So we know what would serve as a good starter caliber for the first two gun categories, but what about the last? What would be a good comfortable yet effective round for a newbie in the shotgun category? We've got the 22, the 9 millimeter, the 223. Let's talk about the 20 gauge here. 20 gauge is a common gauge that new shooters start out right. on. But the cartridge looks totally different. Yes. What color is this? Yellow. It is absolutely sunshine yellow. It's yellow for a safety reason because 20 and 12 gauges are very commonly shot right. and you gotta do the right ammo in the right gun. So we have our primer, our powder, we have a little bit of air gap and then we have a plastic wad sitting in there which is actually a cup and inside that cup are a lot of little lead shot. So this is kind of what it looks like on the inside. You okay. got a whole bunch of those little oh, rascals yeah. rolling around So in they're there. really just BBs is mm -hmm. what I'm seeing, little balls. The proper way for me to hand you this gun is to have the ejection port open like that. Okay. The safety's on and my finger's out of the trigger. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> now that one definitely has more recoil than the others. You did a very good job, by the way. Thank you. This is different than all the other holes. 
instead of just having one projectile, you can see the shot that yeah. was in there. It's, it's spread all out, yep. mostly in the center because we were shooting a close distance on this one, so it didn't fan out a lot. Well, I think we've gotten a good idea of what all these rounds are used for and what they can do upon impact. And I'm not saying that shooting sheetrock isn't fun, but I think, Melanie, we might be able to come up with um, one or two more things to shoot. What do you say? That sounds like a plan. I say let's do it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ah! ah! What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that oh, beats housework. It does beat housework. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yoo! <laughs> and lastly, <laughs> woo! There is just not a lot that's a, a, that much fun. <laughs> that's the most fun I've had making that big a mess in a long time. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> okay, I've got one last thing I think we should shoot. I'm ready, let's do it. All right, come here. Okay, so I've always heard that when you shoot a watermelon with a shotgun, it will explode. And I was thinking maybe it would be a good experiment. What do you think? Well, it's hot. It is hot. That's cold. This is cold. So why don't we eat that instead? That's genius. Let's roll. Let's do it. Cheers. Melanie. I believe this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Back at you, Natalie. Well, that's what I call a pretty perfect day. Thanks to Melanie Sturgis for the wonderful instruction. And now, let's take a look at our Cabela's checklist. Now, lots of ladies out there, including me, like to take a relaxing hour every so often to get a nice manicure, and we don't want it ruined. And even if you're not the type to get a manicure, those mags can do a number on your hands. That's where the Lula comes in. This genius little device makes your life a lot easier by making loading your mags quick and easy. And it has the added bonus of keeping your manicurist happy. Now we've loved all your questions, feedback, and input online, so keep it coming. Check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram feeds for more polls and even some behind the scenes photos. We'll see you next time on Love at First Shot, sponsored by Smith & Wesson.